Hey everybody, if you're like most people, you'll get out of your truck from time to time with it still running. Maybe to get something out of the bed, or to put a letter in the mailbox, or maybe just to clear snow off your rear camera. You put the truck in park and set the parking brake. And if the key's still in your pocket while you step out of the truck, you're rewarded with the infamous double honk. Now maybe once in a blue moon that double honk comes in handy. Like if you're getting out of the truck and you're dropping yourself off for somebody else to drive, if you forget to pass the key off, they're not gonna get too far. But the other 99% of the time, it's always honking at the wrong time and at the wrong place. Like six o'clock in the morning on a quiet residential street where you're gonna find out about the Second Amendment the hard way. So how do we get rid of this annoying nanny state feature? Well, we can't just go to our screen in the truck and option it out. We can't turn it off like that. So what we have to do is we have to dive into the actual software that runs the truck through a program called Forescan. So in this short and super exciting video, I'm gonna show you first of all what Forescan is, number two, how to use it with your truck, and then number three, how to get rid of that annoying double honk. Let's go. Let's begin by defining what Forescan is and how we use it. The easiest way for me to do this is just visually through the components. First of all, we need to find the OBD2 port, which is just above your left knee in the driver's space. So if you've never seen it before, take a look down there and you can see this very defined port that we use to talk to the truck. Now from there, what we need to do is to have an interface that knows how to talk to the truck. And this is what the dongle is for and I'm using in particular the OBD Link MX Plus dongle, which I've used for other projects as well too, and it's a really, really good one for using with a Ford F-150. Next up, we need a Windows laptop. I'll talk about the specs of that in a minute, and then on top of that, what we're gonna do is install the Forescan app. Now, to communicate between the two, I am using Bluetooth between the Windows laptop to talk to the OBD Link MX Plus dongle. Now, some people have got other versions of a dongle and they've got a USB cord. That's fine, some people swear by them. Some people think that the Bluetooth connection is unstable. That could possibly be, I have not had problems with it and I find it very, very simple to use. One device for everything. So those are the three different components, the port, the dongle, and the laptop, along with the Forescan app. Now you might be saying, hey, that looks extensive or expensive and I don't have all those pieces. Well, it's really not that bad. Again, you wanna get the OBD Link MX Plus dongle anyway because it's the most comprehensive OBD2 interface for Ford PIDs. So you can use this as a monitor while you're driving down the road. You can come up with a, a dashboard. I've had other videos where I've showed how to use something like this where you can monitor your battery or the temperature or any of the other literally hundreds of PIDs that are available through the OBD Link MX Plus dongle. So I have an Amazon link in the video description. If you don't have one, they're easy to get with on your doorstep in a couple of days. Now the laptop, the specs to me are irrelevant. I'm using my mother-in-law's decommissioned laptop. This thing had no power to begin with. This is why she gave up on it and it's fine for using it for Forescan. I don't really care about the speed as long as it can talk Bluetooth to the OBD Link MX Plus dongle, which it can, that's all I need it to do. There's really no speed or memory or storage requirements for this application. Now, if you wanted to use a MacBook, you certainly could, but you've got to have a Windows partition to run Forescan. Forescan only runs on a Windows operating system. Okay, I'm gonna do a very quick Forescan 101 now. Now, I personally avoided this for almost two years, messing around with my truck because everything worked so well, and it's just after a couple of years now that there's a couple of things that I just can't live with anymore. I've gotta get them changed. So I have forced myself to learn this, and really it was not all that difficult to do. And as long as you take things step by step, you're gonna do just fine. Now, I am standing on the shoulders of giants with this. 
Please understand that there's nothing here that I've invented. I'm just passing along information from everybody else. If you would like to change the options on your F-150, please proceed very slowly, very deliberately. Read through the process I'm gonna show you here and through the resources that I'm going to provide for you, which were provided to me, so make sure you have everything on hand for us before you get started. Take notes as you go along, double check your work, take screenshots, make sure that you understand exactly what you've done and exactly what you've changed. Don't make more than one change at a time. I shouldn't have to say something like this, but you know, us cowboys, we get in there, we wanna change everything at once. Hey, let's try this, let's try that. Please don't do that. Change one thing at a time, make sure it's good, set up your backups, you can do this if you proceed step by step. If you come into this like a cowboy shooting away from the hip, you're gonna get the results you deserve. So number one, have all the components on hand before you start. So make sure you have a dongle, make sure you've got some form of Windows laptop and you've got the Forescan software. We're gonna walk you through the components here again. So read the living it up tutorial. And I will link this document in the YouTube video description below. This dude's going to walk you through everything you need to know and more. So really, this is the document that I read and that taught me how to do this. So I'm just going to pass along what you should be reading anyway. And then he's got a Google sheet, which has got all the different changes, all the different modules, what module you're going to find the changes on way, way, way beyond the information that most of you will need, certainly for me. So just get this thing set up on a Google Sheet. If you don't have a Google account, go get one for free so you can get your own Google Sheets and so you can download this into Read Only. So it works great. Number four, download the Forescan executable program onto your Windows laptop. Install it. Like I said before, it's possible to emulate a Windows laptop on a MacBook through a virtual machine, through Wine, or any of the number of solutions that are out there. I have a MacBook, but I chose to use this decommissioned mother-in-law Windows laptop as there's very little processing power required by Forescan. And then uh, register for an extended license. So you'll see the process for doing this on there. It takes maybe half an hour it works for about two months, and then you're gonna to have to register for another one. Probably you're not gonna be making too many changes past that two months anyway. And if you need to do it, it's free. Or you can buy a lifetime extended license if you wanna do this like all the time, that's fine. So 30 minutes is all it will take for you to get this extended free license. Number six, update the license key in the Forescan software. So once you finish this step, restart Forescan and verify that the license is updated in Forescan. So go to the about, make sure that you have a license in there and then you are good to go. Number seven, pair the Bluetooth in the OBD Link MX Plus adapter to your Windows laptop. Make sure that you can pair it and you can get the two devices talking to each other and then select the connect to vehicle in the Forescan app. It's down in the lower left-hand corner. That is the connect and right next to it is the disconnect as well too, which we'll see later on. And maybe this is something you should do before this, but I would say watch the living it up module backup video. It's only a couple of minutes long, it takes you no time to watch this video. And it shows you how to back up all of your default settings. So you gotta have all these default as built settings and then use your standard file management, right? So get them into a cloud account, get them somewhere else, get them onto a flash drive, whatever you have to do, but get them off that laptop so you can store them somewhere else. So if you ever need it on the road, you have access to it and you can reflash your modules with the defaults. So the link to this video is included in the tutorial as well as I'll include it in the video description below. And you've got to do this to set everything back to default. So this step will also familiarize you with how to navigate Forescan. So it's a nice little procedure to get you very comfortable with the software. It's very easy to use. And then lastly, back up the as-built modules using the process that you just watched.
Okay, so now we are ready to make config changes to our truck. And I am gonna start by killing that dreaded double honk. So let's get into how I did this. I've got a screen capture of how I killed the double honk. All right, the first thing we have to do is to connect the laptop to the dongle. So we're gonna make sure that we're paired. We are paired. And then down in the lower left-hand corner, we're gonna to connect to the vehicle. So we're gonna hit that little connection. And then if it is connected, I'm gonna to start to see the modules populate. We're gonna see a discussion that's happening between the Forescan software and the truck through the MX Plus dongle. And this is starting to happen now. So what I'm doing is I'm just telling it, yes, we've already talked before. You know who I am, I know who you are. So we're selecting the profile and then the rest of these modules will populate out and we'll be ready to get going here. So now that we have all the modules populated, what I wanna do is I wanna go back to the living it up four scan sheet and I want to zoom in on this double horn honk disable and familiarize myself with exactly what it is that I need to change. Sometimes it's better if you just write these out instead of uh, trying to look at on one screen on a laptop, best if you write it out exactly what you're changing. So in this case, it's gonna be the body control module, and then I've got the address for it and also the exact changes that I need to make. So I need to find the body control module, and then I'm gonna use the as-built format to configure this. So we're gonna go down there and hit run service. And then this is going to talk to the body control module. It's gonna give me a warning saying, don't do this. It's gonna read all the blocks in, so we have good communication between the two. And then it's gonna give me what you'll see as the configuration. So now what I need to do, if you see all those numbers on the left, the 72601, 72605, 08, 72610, I need to move all the way down to 72663. So I've got to move all the way down that list until I hit 72663 and then get to the right configuration. So we're going to have to drag this down. And it's uh, the body control module is quite extensive. As you might imagine, there's a lot going on. So there we go. There's 7266302. That's the one that I want to mess with right there. So let's go back and let's verify exactly what we're gonna do and what fields we need to modify it. So it looks like in the first field, the last digit needs to be a zero. In the first field, the last digit needs to be a zero and it's currently one. So we're gonna verify that. We're gonna check it off just one more time and make sure. This is why I'm saying you should probably write this down ahead of time or make a screen print or print it off or something like that so you have a good visual. So there he is. I've made the change. I'm going to write it. Incorrect checksum. This is always a warning signal that comes up. Ignore that. It's writing it. Program successfully. Cycle the ignition off and on. And then we are done. Once we do that, we can stop the service procedure. Now, the only other thing I need to do is to disconnect from the vehicle. So we're going to we're gonna hit, that is the connect. We're gonna hit the disconnect, which is right next to it. So there we go, there's the disconnect. Now we're disconnected from the truck. We can't make any changes to the truck and we are good to go. So now let's check our work. Okay, the truck is on and I'm going to walk outside. And no double honk, how about that? And that's all there is to it. I mean, I, I, I feel kind of silly that I held off for two years before I did something like this. And, you know, once you put about an hour's worth of research into what you need to make this successful, it's really not that hard. It's a really very simple procedure that literally anybody 
can do. All you have to do is just be very cautious, be deliberate, just do one thing at a time. Don't go crazy and cowboy the whole procedure. So with that, if you found this useful, please let me know if there's anything else that you'd like to me to uh, to research and dig into on the foreskin world. You know, I've kind of just opened up Pandora's box here and uh, willing to try just about anything at this point. And I hope you find this useful. Thanks again for watching.